it was hard to keep the secret. My husband and a few of my friends knew I was working on the movie, but I couldn't say what I was doing, although I think some people figured it out. The production designer for Man of Steel read about my research on Navi and then contacted me and asked me to consult about possibly bringing Kryptonian language into the movie Man of Steel. I was really surprised and I was skeptical it was a real email. I don't know why I was skeptical, but um, I was excited and uh, when they brought me to Vancouver the first time, it was amazing to be on the set and to go in and see all of the art pictures and to meet the production designer and um, learn about the movie. I got to hear about the plot two years before anybody else did. When you're looking at developing a language, one of the basic things to start with, the building blocks of language are sound, and that's the study of phonology. And then from there, we move on to look at morphology, or the study of how words are put together. So after I had looked at the sounds of Kryptonian, then I thought about how words could be put together. And then from there, we look at how words can then be put into sentences, and what kind of sentence structure will be in that language. We looked at a lot of the names that had previously been in the canon, in comic books, in the movies, in various other TV shows to see what kind of sounds were already av available to us through the names, such as Kal-El is the name for Clark Kent when he's on Krypton, and Jor-El. So we knew J was a sound because Jor-El was one of the characters. So I looked at all of those and then came up with ideas about basic sounds for the language. Another thing we looked at when we were creating the Kryptonian language was the sentence structure. So in English we say subject, verb, object. I saw him. In Kryptonian, because people were being very selfish and they were using all their resources, but they were also had this intense association with their objects, we changed that around so it was subject, object, verb. The objects had more of a prominence, so that was something else that we considered. Mu, te, kau, din, guran, nika. When the viral marketing was happening for the movie, there was something called the Deep Space Radio Wave Project, which had sounds where you could help people translate the Kryptonian number system, as well as some words, as part of their marketing campaign. The statement, you alone are not, or you are not alone, which comes from General Zod's video to Earth in the movie. But you can also go to the Glyph Creator, which will help you figure out what your house would be if you were a member of Krypton Society. So your house sign, your symbol for your house, as well as how to write your name in the new Kryptonian writing system. This is the first time a created language has gone along with symbols that have been shown. So there is potential for fans to learn the language. This was a great opportunity for me because as I teach a course on new languages, including pigeons, creoles, and created languages, previously I've looked at other people's languages. And my students have looked very extensively at Klingon, Navi, Esperanto, Dothraki from Game of Thrones. So now it'll be interesting for my students to look at the language I created to see what happens with that and how it develops as an online fan culture, but also how it relates back to the culture of the world of Krypton. One of the things that I was most excited about was seeing the writing and seeing the product of all my work, but also seeing all of the places that I had stood on set and how they translated onto the screen, because what people do in the movie industry is amazing.